Hey everyone, I'm on a train. I bet you're wondering where I'm going. Well, I am going to my birth mother's funeral. So a lot of people would, I know, will be thinking, why are you going? Why are you bothering? And I think, I think it's something I need to do. And I'm not sure why I need to do it, but I suppose I need to accept that it's over and it's finished. And yeah, so um, we're going to go back to Birmingham. Now, Birmingham is where it all started off for me. And I don't really talk about Birmingham that much because there's not a lot of good memories from it. There's some, you know, from definitely from meeting my aunt and my cousins, but um, not a lot. Hey everybody, so I guess you are wondering why all of a sudden I am here, why I am sitting in my living room and why I've shaved my beard off and have this kind of 80s porn star moustache going on. I will answer all those at the end of this video. Obviously yesterday I was going to my mother's funeral in Birmingham. To be honest, I wasn't able to carry on filming. It was just, just my, just when I arrived in Birmingham, it all just became too much for me. So I thought I'll do it when I'm here at home, comfortable in my own secure place. Now, this is gonna be a longer video because I've tried to make this video twice already and I was trying to, you know, get it into 12, 13 minutes, which I tried to keep my videos to. This can't be 12 or 13 minutes, so I hope you'll stick with me and watch it. The thing is, I need to explain a lot because if you've seen Shadow Dreamer, then you know my story. But if you haven't seen it, then there's a lot of things that won't make sense. And there's a lot of people that are very close to me. A lot of my friends in Glasgow haven't seen Shadow Dreamer. So I'm going to have to take you through it step by step. So as you know, I was going to the funeral. So I arrived in Birmingham and went to the crematorium. I have three cousins, John, Paul and Mark. And John is my, I call him my nice cousin because he's the one that's kept in touch with me. I used to be very close to Paul as well, but when I left Birmingham, I think there was a lot of anger towards me. Now my aunt, who is my mother's sister, this is my aunt here, she was amazing. She passed away nine years ago. And this here is my mother, Sylvia. Now my aunt was amazing. She was just, it was like, even though they were sisters, my aunt got all the motherly instincts and my mother got none of them at all. Um, my aunt was amazing and I lived with them for six months when I was 19. My aunt had opened her home up to me and I thought it was the right thing to do to move there. So I moved in with my cousins, my brother. I also have a brother called Mick, who is the same mother from me, but he was adopted by my aunt and uncle and brought up in that family as their son. So he knows, but he knows who my mother is or our mother is, but he has nothing to do with her. He hates her. He detests her. He'll walk out of the room when she walks in. He um, calls her every name under the sun. He um, He's just, he hates her. And she has very, well, she has no time for him either. So I went to the funeral and saw my cousin Paul. My other cousin John lives in Devon, so he, he didn't get up for the funeral. And saw my cousin Paul and it was nice to see him because we got a chance to speak just a little bit you know and they don't know why i left birmingham you know my mother gave my aunt an ultimatum and she said you have to pick stephen or you pick me 
And my aunt could never make that decision. My aunt was just such a wonderful, amazing, kind person that she couldn't make that decision. And I knew it would have to be me that made it, you know, and I knew that the right thing. I was so concerned about my family. I think I've thought more about them than I did about myself. So I decided that the right thing to do was to leave. But my aunt didn't want my cousins or my brother to know why I was leaving or the true reason why I was leaving. Um, so she said, you just tell them that you're missing your friends, you're missing home. So that's what I told them. And of course, there was a lot of anger because they were like, well, we opened our home up to you. Why, you know, went to the funeral, saw my cousin Paul and his family. And it was lovely to see them. And it was nice to reconnect with them. And afterwards, Paul and I went for a coffee and I didn't go looking for anything financial. It was the furth furthest thing from my mind, financial, anything. I didn't know what my mother had. I didn't know if she owned a house. I didn't know anything. It hadn't even come into my head because why? That's not what I wanted from her. All I wanted from her was her love and, love and acceptance. So. Paul was talking to me and all of a sudden he went, Stephen, you know, we're really, we're really shocked by the will. And I was like, what do you mean? And my mother owned a small flat in Birmingham. And he said, she split the, the, the will between the three cousins, John, Paul and Mark, which obviously I understand. But then she, then he said, and she, she's also split it between Mick as well. My, my brother, who, as I say, for 30 years, the guy has not spoken to her. He didn't come to her funeral. He, he hated her. And I know it seems like I'm annoyed because I didn't get something, but that's not what it is. It was like the final thing that my mother could do. The final, the final way that she could have said, I accept you and you're my son but she she cut me out of that will she cut me out of that altogether and it's just it's just heartbreaking because it just makes me think she never even throughout her life she never accepted me and even in death she didn't accept me and it's really 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 difficult because you can't help feeling that it's a person that it's something about me you know and I've worked really hard to not be you know when you've been when you've had abuse or when there's been a rape or when you have been homeless or beaten or whatever the the thing might be people often think people often say and I don't take this in the wrong way you know because people mean it in, in a kind way but they say oh god you've turned out so well, you know, it's amazing that you're not a madman or a psychopath or a, you know, and, and it's easy to become that, you know, it's easy to, to take on all the stuff that's happened to you and make it something that changes you into a person that is angry and bitter and twisted. And I was becoming that person in my twenties and my early thirties, you know, until I realized that I had to change it. Now, this will, my cousin said, Stephen, you've got a right to contest the will. I'm not gonna contest the will. That's not what I'm about, you know. It's just the fact that she didn't, she included my brother Mick, who just despised her and she didn't include me and and I know I know it seems like I'm annoyed because I didn't get something but that isn't that isn't it that isn't it at all it goes a lot lot deeper than that and it's just all I ever wanted from my mother was was her love and acceptance and I never ever got it and even in death, even in death, it didn't happen. And 
I feel like it's my fault. And I know I shouldn't feel like that. <laughs> but I don't understand why she cut me out again. I've spent my whole life looking for that love from my parents and I've never got it and now I'm never gonna get it it's never gonna happen but this this final thing is just it is like the final nail in the coffin you know it's just she didn't like me and I don't know why I have so many friends that have kids that say how could she have done that how could she have you know just there was no love there you know and this proves it you know it's just it's really really difficult and I'm trying not to make it my fault because it's not my fault, but I can't help feeling that it is. <sighs> oh. It's just really sad. It's really sad. It's really, really sad. Oh, and you know, I never blamed her. I never blamed her. And my brother blames her for everything. Everything. And I never blamed her because I didn't know what the circumstances were. When she fell pregnant with me, I, I wasn't there. I didn't know, so I just wanted her to love me and um, it's really sad that that is, will never happen now and how I need to work out how I move on as a child that was never loved by their parents <laughs> and now obviously I'm an adult but it affects me it still affects me and I work really hard to not let it affect me but it 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 affects everything, Christmas, birthdays, celebrations, um, when you're sick, when you, you know, not having that person, you know, and I have some amazing friends, you know, and it's not, it's not downing on my friends, it's not about that, because they're amazing, but they have their lives, you know, they, you know, friend has got married, friend's just had a baby, friend's just got into a new relationship, you know, they all have their lives and they can't, you know, they can't be hanging around looking after me. So, oh. I said I would answer some questions. So, um, the porn moustache. Um, I am currently taking part in a drama that's written by my friend Lance, who I did a video with a while ago. Um, we are still writing our play, Who We Are. Um, we've had, it's all been on hold because of COVID, but we're still gonna be working on that. But this is a, a story that Lance wrote in 2008. So we're doing it um, over three Sundays and it's going to be on YouTube. Well, it is on YouTube. So the link is in the description box below. So at the moment, when I make this video, you can check out the first part. Um, the next part is going to be on Sunday and then the, the final part will be on the following Sunday. So yeah, I'm playing a, an 80s 
detective, sorry, a 90s detective. So Lance was like, can you shave the beard down? So that's the reason for this. I'm in the living room just because I have all my camera stuff set up in here because I've been doing the Zoom. It, we're doing it all via Zoom. So it's a really different way of working. It's really interesting, you know, to, to, to see how that works. Oh yeah, extra video. So there's an extra video coming out next week. So next Thursday there will be an extra video for you because I know I've been distant for the last four weeks or so, um, but it's just been because of all this going on with my mom, you know, and um, yeah, it's just, I just don't know. I just don't know how to, how to feel better, you know, um, And I miss Molly, I miss my friend Molly, I miss Kieran. I just, you know, there's been so many people that have gone in the last couple of years and it's just like, I feel too young to be, <laughs> to be dealing with this. <laughs> but I'm not, you know, I know. Um, some people have to deal with it at a lot younger age than me. It's just the final realization, you know, that she didn't care. That's how it feels, that she just didn't care. And she knew that my cousin was in touch with me, you know, it's not like, oh, we don't know where Stephen is, you know. Um, it's just, just sad. Anyway, everybody, I'm going to shush because this has been a long video. Thank you for watching and I'm sorry. It's, it, you know, I just, I just wanted to tell you about that feeling of sadness you know and how real it is and yeah anyway okay thank you um remember everybody a new video out next week please remember to like share comment and subscribe please do all that just hit hit that thumb button it's right down there it's right in front of you you can do it just hit that button um, remember to check out the project that I'm doing with Lance um, and uh, the link is down below and um, yeah leave me some comments tell me if you have been through a similar thing um, yeah families are crazy aren't they and believe me I'm not looking this isn't a sympathy video I don't want sympathy I'm not very good with sympathy to be honest it makes me feel uncomfortable I don't like it um, so it's not about that, you know, it's just about talking about her and yeah, trying to accept that it's all over. Okay, everybody. Thank you. Um, I will see you next week. Remember next week, I've got an extra special video coming out, all being well, um, COVID depending, but hopefully it will all come out next Thursday. So thank you. Take care.